Hey guys, so I'm Dr. Truesdale. I'm a double board certified facial plastic surgeon. And today we're gonna dive into the amazing world of skin rejuvenation. Listen, we all want beautiful skin, whether we want anti-aging, wrinkle reduction, acne improvement, scar improvement. I'm gonna to talk to you about something today that all of us can do, almost all of us, that's non-surgical and has a huge benefit for our skin. Let's dive in. What is red light therapy? So red light therapy or light therapy in general or photobiostimulatory therapy is used by taking a specific wavelength of light, shining it on the skin to stimulate the skin to improve itself. So it can be used for a variety of different functions which we'll cover in a second. But when we think about light, light is energy and energy travels in waves. So if we're thinking about the visible spectrum of light, that's what we can see with our eyes. There's also infrared or invisible wavelengths of light as well. Red light specifically is anything in the 620 nanometer to 750 nanometer range. So when we think about a prism and we separate the Roy G. Biv or all the colors in the visible spectrum, red sits in between that range. Infrared is anywhere from that 750 nanometers to about a million nanometers or one millimeter. And so that's invisible, even though there is some crossover between the infrared and the red spectrums, that is basically a large range, but we can't see that with our visible eye. Both treatments or therapies can actually have benefit for uh, specific concerns. Now, the main difference between red light and infrared light is how much that light can penetrate. So increasing wavelength can increase the depth of penetration of that energy. So infrared therapy can target things that are much deeper. So muscle aches, things like that, also recovery, but deeper than just the surface layer of the skin. Now you can combine red light therapy and infrared therapy into combo treatments, but today we're gonna specifically talk about red light therapy. So how does red light therapy work? So red light therapy works by when that light is absorbed by our skin, there's a special part of our skin called the mitochondria. And if you remember back into biology, the mitochondria or the powerhouse of the cell is the part, is the organelle inside the cell that's responsible for making energy as well as synthesis of proteins. And so when that light is absorbed in the mitochondria, there's a special part of our energy production or ATP production, adenosine triphosphate production in what's called the electron transport chain. That's how we convert oxygen and nutrients, right, into energy for our cells to use. And so when that light is absorbed, it increases all of the output of that powerhouse. So energy is improved. Synthesis of new molecules is improved. And it has been shown through our scientific literature, there's a lot of data to support the improvement and the increased production of both collagen and elastin when red light therapy is used. Collagen and elastin are fundamental protein that are found in our cells and in our skin that makes us look more youthful, more rejuvenated. It's also important in regulation of basically hair growth because ultimately what we're trying to do is make that substance improve. So cell turnover, it also decreases inflammation. It downregulates basically or shuts down inflammatory cytokines. So cytokines are these little messenger proteins that our cells make that cause our body to feel like we're stressed. Red light therapy can decrease pro-inflammatory cytokines and decrease inflammatory cytokines. So it works on a molecular and basically a cellular level to increase the rejuvenation of our tissues. So if we're thinking about what that can be used for, as a plastic surgeon, that can be used to improve skin as it relates to wrinkles, fine lines, also scars. It can help with acne because when the red light is absorbed, it causes the decreases in inflammation as well as it helps target bacteria. So when we have acne, the two principal things that are going on, right, is inflammation as well as bacterial growth. It helps with both of those things. 
The other things that it can help with are hyperpigmentation, increased wound healing, because it increases blood flow to the skin. All of these things help the skin look better. If you do a quick Google search, you'll see a ton of red light therapy options. How do we choose what's best? Now, some of that depends on what your goal is, right? Now, the first and most important thing whenever I'm talking about any medical therapy is making sure whatever we do is safe. Now, in general, red light therapy is safe for many, many people and there are very, very few side effects or downsides, but there are special considerations in people that should avoid red light therapy or should seek specific medical advice. Now, what are those conditions? There are certain photosensitizing medications that people can take, including certain diuretics, anti-inflammatory medicines, antibiotics, as well as others, where if you're taking these medications and you are exposed to red light, it could cause downsides of irritated skin, photosensitivity, redness, or even blistering. So it's important to review with your specific physician if this is something that is an option for you. There are other conditions. In general, it is not recommended for pregnant or breastfeeding patients. The other people that might want to avoid red light therapy, if you have any open wounds, red light therapy can actually decrease healing in these situations. So we generally only recommend it for when the skin is was closed. One last type of special situation, and there might be others where you might not want to expose yourself to red light therapy, is if you have seizure conditions. The bright light could potentially exacerbate any underlying seizures, and so really consult with your physician about that specifically. Now, red light therapy has a very important thing that you have to consider. So the human retina, part of our eye, which helps us see, it can be damaged by direct exposure to red light therapy, especially high intensity red light. So whatever device you choose, either using eye protection or making sure that your eyes are directed away from the red light is very, very important. Red light therapy, these panels or these devices, how do you choose? So they all have usually an LED light emitting diode light source. We really wanna look at what is the intensity of this source and that is measured in something called fluids. So we wanna get a red light therapy mask or panel. How do we measure what might be a good option? Now, some of that depends on your personal lifestyle. Do you want something with a long battery time? Do you want something that might have a handpiece? You wanna make sure that it covers your eyes or basically avoids contact of that red light directly into your, uh, your vision. The other important aspects are the duration of your therapy, how many LEDs it actually contains. What is the irradiance? The irradiance is basically how intense that light is on the skin. And that's usually measured by the energy per surface area. So when we're looking at the best radiance, when we're looking at the scientific literature, that ranges anywhere between five and 20 watts per meter squared. So other way of thinking about that number is 110 watts per centimeter square, okay? So if you're looking on the label, you're looking on the back of one of these devices, you wanna make sure it at least has something like that. The other things that can influence the intensity of the light are the surface coverage. You wanna make sure that the skin is well balanced and bathed. The other things that you might consider are the ease of use, the fit, how comfortable it might be, as well as the charging time of the actual device. Use this thing consistently because that consistent use is gonna make sure that you get consistent results, that the collagen, the elastin, your skin, your fine lines, your wrinkles, and overall glow and rejuvenation of the skin is improved. So you wanna make sure that it fits because if it does not fit, you will not wear it and you will not be compliant. So you wanna make sure that it fits up well and that you're really comfortable using it. Treatment times for these devices usually range anywhere between five and 20 minutes, and the treatment effect is dictated by the specific wavelength of light, as well as the intensity of the irradiance, okay, and how close it is to the skin. All of these things factor in and how powerful the treatment might be. So it's important to consider how many LEDs the device has, most importantly for the coverage, right? We wanna make sure that the entire surface of the skin is being irradiated to a treatment level. And so the more, usually the better, as long as it is at that nice safe range of irradiance, that's what you're really looking for. So 
I'm gonna summarize everything that we've learned about the crazy world of red light therapy. So red light therapy is using specific red light wavelength treatment on the skin to improve skin elasticity, quality, as well as increasing elastin and collagen. The other improved effects are increased recovery, decreased scar, as well as acne treatment. Now, red light therapy can be done at home and has very, very few risks, but there are some important ones to consider, which we talked about previously in the treatment. Red light therapy can be done at home using relaxing. It's very important to make sure that your eyes are protected from the direct radiation, but it has extensive both research as well as clinical functions for treatment of skin conditions, as well as other benefits like muscular or athletic recovery. So red light therapy is an amazing tool, non-invasive, doesn't require any scalpel, no blades, and it's something you can do at home to improve your skin, because we're all fighting against father time. So hopefully you've learned a little bit here. If you're interested in learning more or wanna discuss or look at one of the reviews of me reviewing some of these red light therapy options, check the link below. So if you guys like content like this, where I'm discussing basically some part of facial plastic surgery or skin rejuvenation, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us, and click the notification bell so that you're up to date with new videos. All right, see you guys soon.